adjustment. The Bulls car does not make the starting grid. And the Jockey Pooling car for Nick Salva does not make the grid as well. Remember the story. It's not just we know who the champion is in this class, but it's competitors that want to move up to second, third, fourth, and fifth, finish in the top ten or the top fifteen. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready. Lights are off. Chris Cabato on the starter stand. Watch for that pace car to dive in. Hang on to the edge of your seats. Here's Matt Buckler as we go SK Modified Racing here at Stafford. The high school student at Wilkin High, Mike Christopher, leading him to the line. And it is quite a battle shaping up between himself and Matty Ice, Matt Galco. Galco tries the magic in the outside lane. Up on the wheel. We've seen Galco do this number before, Matt, as he continues to march to the front, high wide and handsome as he brings it back to the line. Boy, he was not timid about going to the outside, and he is able to strut into the lead. Second becomes a battle between Mike Christopher and Williams, and now Williams uh, moving up. It is Owen trying to fight for position. Michael Christopher gives a tap to the bumper, like the days of old, a one-two punch. Here comes Todd Owen. Owen had a rocket. Yo, trouble now. Michael Christopher's car got sideways. He gathered it back. Four cars, six, ten cars, consenting for second. Off to the bottom. Here comes Williams. Down to the inside. Christopher on the outside. Burt becomes a factor here. And Williams trying to dig bomb his way into second, and he's going to be able to do it. Mike Christopher drops back to third, and a man on a mission right now, Todd Owen, holding off Eric Burt for the top four. Meanwhile, Owen goes up and takes over, running impressively to the outside in a bid for the fourth spot. Owen looks racy. Here comes Burt now to the bottom. Can't do it. Look at Pitcat. He runs to the outside. Here comes Kid Rock and Danny Cates, Ted Christopher, and Rowan Pennick. And there is a Keith Rocco sighting as he is currently in seventh trying to pick up a position. And it looks like he is going to be able to infiltrate his way to the top six as he gets underneath Woody Pitcat. Look at Williams. Outside, inside. Galco slams the door. Second leader of the event. Five laps up on the board. Here he comes. Williams had it by inches, but Galco takes it in at a ton turn one. And changing of the guard that is reflected in our front row of Williams and Galco. Also, Mike Christopher trying to clothesline his way underneath Galco. The top three cars could fit in a jalapeno, and it's Ronnie Williams out in front. Michael Christopher got his second win, and it is a good one. He moves down underneath Galco. Owen is not to be doubted in this event. Owen taps to the back bumper. Here comes Bird. Here comes Williams, leading him back to the stripe. Seven laps, make it eight of 40 now completes. Todd Owen looking for his second win of the season as he perches himself behind the 82 of Mike Christopher Jr. Burn is fifth, followed by Rocco. Here comes Mike Christopher. He explodes, he erupts, and he will land in second place. While he's there, Galco continues to dig in on the outside. Meanwhile, look at Todd Owen. Tenacious one. He goes to the bottom as well. He forces Mike Christopher to go or show we've got a trouble. Turn number one. Red flag situation. Stephen Kopsick, if it wasn't for bad luck, he would have no luck at all on this fall final Napa presentation. He was involved in a jingle in qualifying yesterday, had to use a provisional to get into the main event. Phil Moran, because Kopsik is a very talented and focused individual, Kopsik works with the Phil Moran, Doug Kobe team on the NASCAR Wheel and Modified Tour, came to the Kopsik team and helped they feel them. feel that one of the decisions that they made that was critical to their winning back-to-back -back championships was that night when they said, we're going to take this race car that we've had so much success with here on Friday nights, rebuild it and get it back to the racetrack. And when they came back, had a good, strong run inside the top 10, they knew at that point the championship was theirs. All they had to do is execute, and they did that to perfection to be able to come in here on cruise control knowing already they are the champions this year.
You are right 100%. Let's uh, pick up the volume just a bit. Rev things up as they work magic. Oh, all of a sudden now we've got the safety truck. Caution flag is out. Oh boy. Everybody getting a little bit too rambunctious. As the family Ford of Enfield safety services truck on the front straightaway checking out things. Making sure that there was nothing on the racetrack that could create a problem. And now we're going to re-rack the field here. You know, Tommy Fern is up in the press box talking to the media after wrapping up the track championship. He had a very interesting stat. He finished every lap this year, and I did some quick math. That's 540 laps. Tommy Fern finished all of them, and he led most of them. That's so that was an incredible run, finishing every lap. And when you can do that, you can win a championship the fourth year for at Stafford for Fern and the seventh in his career. Okay. Nine laps. 40 the overall distance. Here they come. Green is out. Picture perfect start, Matt. And Williams has it by inches off turn number two. And Mike Christopher has to worry about the presence of Matt Galco underneath him. And he gets by Galco. And now pressuring from behind is tenacious Todd Owen. Todd Owen looking racy up front. Looks the chrome horn right on the eye beam of Michael Christopher. Galco continues to dig in. Here comes Keith Rocco. Todd Owen has a rocket as he now moves into the third spot. Here comes Galco not giving up on the inside groove. They were in their way into the first corner. Keith Rocco was on the inside for the first nine laps. It's Martin to the outside. Keith Rocco in the top four. Also, who's the tail that wags a dog there? Eric Burt, the bulldog, as he is coming to the front. He puts the car to the outside, throws it to the upper groove, and makes his presence known around Galco. Down the back straightaway. Here comes Michael Christopher. Slingshot move to the inside. Ka-ching, ka-ching, leader number three, Michael Christopher, and here comes Todd Owen. Owen switches to the inside where he has momentum as he is able to whiplash his way. Hey, Rod Williams, here he comes after Christopher going down low and a bit for the lead. Michael Christopher guards the lead. Owen is all over him like gum on the bottom of your shoe. Owen has come to race and play hard here tonight. As here is Todd Owen. He is so close to Christopher. He is in his bloodstream as they go into turn number three. Also there is Keith Rocco. Galco finding a resurgence as he tries to thunder his way back into fourth place. Todd Owen is trying everything. Peeks at the inside. Pulls it back into line. He can feel the heat of the radiator in the Rocco machine. But he's not giving up. Here comes Ted Christopher. Glenn Reed. The cream is rising to the top. Here comes Todd Owen. Bonsai move to the inside. They rumble off turn number four. Back to the strike they come. Here comes Todd Owen. Bottom shot move turn number one. And will it get Owen to leave? The Tumble. answer is trouble as Gallup is pummeled by Jarvis and also in trouble. Bo it Gunning. looks like the 22 of Bo Gunning. So the 27 car is smoking and Gallup uh, got together and he... Uh, that car was walloped. So Bo Gunning's machine, who started back in 27th, the 44 of Jeff Gallup, started the event in the 22nd starting position. Gallup has climbed out of his car. And you can see... Now I'm taking a look at the lap leaders. We have had three lead changes in 16 circuits. One through five was the three of Galco. The 59 took the lead six through 12. And then it was the 82 on lap number 13 to lead it to 16. Pulling out of line, Ted Christopher, the number 13 machine. We're not sure what that is all about, but he literally pulled out of line. And now he is going back into his correct position, which is sixth on the grid.
As we look at timing and scoring, we're looking at it. If that is correct, there might be an adjustment need in made in that. Well, he does go to the outside there layer. There we go. There we go. We're good. So it looks like Ted Christopher is where he should be. And we will be ready to come up to full speed the next time around. And we'll see how Todd Owen handles the outside terrain against Mike Christopher Jr. Well, get ready. We still got a long way to go. We are four laps shy of the halfway marker in this one. We told you it was going to be a scorcher, and we didn't lie at all. Down the back straight away. Lights are off on the safety vehicle. Now Matt Galco gets out of line. Car number three, the Galco machine. We've received information, possibly a tire going down on the number three car of Matt Galco. He heads down at pit road. What a heartbreaker. Here they come. There is the green. Michael Christopher digs in on the bottom. Todd Owen on the outside. Christopher. Here comes Keith Rocco. Rocco moves down low. Power punch to the back bumper of Christopher. Here comes Owen. They come off the turn like gladiators. Down to the stripe. Christopher still there, Max. And Rocco trying to get underneath Owen. By Todd Owen on the outside room. Morocco in second. We have trouble with a turn four. Rowan Pettick is in the middle of it. Rowan Pettick, the champion, is in a melee off turn number two. Also in the retaining wall on the outside is Josh Wood. And the Pettick machine, from our vantage point of taking a look at it, possibly is not. That's severely damaged. Now we're looking at it, and there is that he and his team took care of business during the final Friday night of the regular season, wrapping up the championship. So uh, that will uh, lessen the pain of what happened on lap number 17. So Rowan Pennick might be out of commission as far as tonight is concerned, but he will be sitting at the head table at the Safford Banquet for the second year in a row. So let's get ready to see him fire back up again. 17 of 40 laps. Pace car dives down on pit road. Michael Christopher and Todd Owen. Deja vu. We saw it happen off turn number four last time. And Christopher is in command. Owen still continues to dig in the upper groove. Down the back straightaway. Christopher and Owen are wheel-to-wheel -wheel, like two cymbals in an orchestra. The noise is there. They are three wide as they come back to the line. And the driver in the middle, Mike Christopher Jr. On Rocco. the inside, Owen takes the lead from Keith Rocco. Todd Owen in a power move that they'll be talking about for many events to come. Moves to the front of the class. Todd Owen is here to race, and he wants to win here at Stafford in the final round. Boy, it's very rare when the guy on the outside of a three wide makes the move. And you just saw Todd Owen pull it off. Rocco pursuing him in second. Gets a little body slam from Mike Christopher. And also back in commission is Ronnie Williams in the 59. They come to the stripe. Halfway down and halfway to go. Todd Owen has glued Christopher. Excuse me, and Rocco glued to his back bumper. Turn number two. Also coming back to the front of the field on the outside. Making some noise is Glenn Reed. He's moved to the bottom of the top seven. Back off turn four. Rocco's tried everything. High, low. Then pulls it back into formation. 21 and counting here at Stafford. Ron Williams is able to dive bomb his way underneath Mike Christopher. He is in third. Now Uncle Ted. Ted Christopher trying to get by Mike Christopher. A battle for the lead. The man who has it is Todd Owen. And the man who wants it is Keith Rocco. Todd Owen continues to run the perfect line with the race car. He is up on the wheel and he is the guy to beat here tonight at Stafford. Down the back straight away. Rocco to the outside. Thinks twice of it. Remember, Rocco's strong point in this racetrack is turn number three. Todd Owen has studied him, and he knows just that as he brings him back to one as your leader. And it's a barn burner for third and fourth between Mike Christopher and Ron Williams. Ed Christopher is still in the neighborhood in fifth. Glenn Reed has gotten by Woody Pitcat, and he is running a strong six. Rocco looking to light the fuse underneath Todd Owen. 
They come off the turn. Owen is not going to be rattled easily. He works his way to the bottom. Owen still in command. Here comes Rocco. Remember, his power move always takes place in turn three. If he can get to the inside, bim, bam, boom. Can't do it. Here comes Owen. Off the turn. Rocco sees daylight. He's sideways, Matt. And that springs Williams into action as he tries to lunge past Rocco. Can't do it. Flops back. Rocco, remember, turn number three is his power alley, but he doesn't have any room. A masterful job being done by Todd Owen. Todd Owen continues to set the pace. Here comes Michael Christopher. He's bringing Uncle Ted with him. Ted works magic down low. We just saw Williams look racy a minute ago, but here comes TC and Glenn Ray Trouble now straight away. Williams and Reem came together. They banged each other and gathered it back. They're all okay somehow in some way as we head back to turn one. As Reem went out with him and almost went over the top of Williams, but they recover. Here comes Mike Christopher. He is breathing fire. He gets underneath Keith Rocco and he is back in second place. Michael Christopher's up to trouble now. We've got him in turn three and four and it looks like, I believe that's the Danny Care Center's conveniently located near you. And yesterday I was on Route 2 and I had to get off the highway on exit 18 and as you come off the exit in Colchester, the only thing you see is the Napa Auto Parts tour. So they are conveniently located all across New England. Here we go. 27, 13 and counting. Rocco on the outside of Todd Owen. Green flag is out. And Owen has a problem on the start, but it's not a good one. Yellow comes out. False alarm. So Rocco got the jump. But oh boy. Keith, uh, Todd Owen gets a reprieve and we will do it over. Have a redo. A redo it is in Todd Owen. He knows the strategy. Todd Owen is a studier. He is no fool by any stretch of the imagination. So he knows the strategy of his fellow competitors. And he was perhaps very smart to do what he did. Because this time, I think it's going to stick, Matt. And he is dead even with Rocco heading off the line. He's dead even heading into turn two. And now Owen pulls away. Todd Owen in command. Down the back straight away. Deep into turn number three. Off the turn. To the stripe they come. Todd Owen still in command. A Mike. battle for second. Mike Christopher trying to get underneath Rocco. Meanwhile, Glenn Reed. Remember, the last Friday night, that car was a rocket. And it still has superpowers as it moves into the fourth position. Back to the stripe. Owen still in command. Out in front, still a side-by-side -side barn burner for second, Matt. And if Glenn Reed can get some space, Ted Christopher also in it. And look at Danny Cates. We haven't talked about him all year long. And he has moved up into seventh place. So he is on a mission. Mike Christopher trying to tuck around Keith Rocco. That is almost impossible to do. And right now, Glenn Reed might have a fast car, but he is bottled up behind the double file battle with Mike Christopher and Keith Rocco. That battle is, oh, Reed was a little bit sideways that time. Ted Christopher runs in his tire tracks. Now Christopher looks to peek to the bottom of Reed. Uh-uh, it's not going to happen there. Owen oh, still in command. Nine laps and counting. Reed again. Takes a shot at going up high. That leaves the door open. Matt, here comes Ted Christopher. And he almost got underneath the 17. The ring was unsuccessful. Woody Pitcat is prowling around in the 50. And now Keith Rocco trying to get underneath Mike Christopher. There he is in turn number three. Extends it into turn number four. A blur is Keith Rocco. Keith Rocco almost was there, but this isn't horseshoes. Close just isn't good enough. Michael Christopher pulls back into second. Seven laps and counting. Todd Owen, like Superman, cape out, and he is at the front of the field, and he is pulling away. Meanwhile, single file the story, and no one is stepping out of line now with 34 now complete. And Glenn Reed still looking for a way to get underneath the combination of Rocco and Christopher. Also in the battle, Ted Chris. 
Christopher. Woody Pitcat now has lost a little ground between himself and Ted Christopher. And in seventh, that is Ronnie Williams. But still, the drum major of the parade is tenacious Todd Owen. Todd Owen has worked so hard all season long. He visited Victory Lane on one occasion this season, and he said yesterday in the paddock, I think I have a race car that can win again here at Stafford. Four circuits remaining, two miles left in the competition here. Still, that battle with Ted Christopher and Glenn Lee is very impressive for the fourth and fifth position. Meanwhile, the field is coming off the turn. 37 as they cross the stripe. This time, the countdown continues, Max. Less than three laps left in the season. Todd Owen trying to corral the win. Ted Christopher moving in on Glenn Rain. That's a ferocious fight for fourth. Eric Byrne having a good run in eighth. But the spotlight is on Todd Owen. Two circuits remaining. One mile left. Todd Owen has hit his marks every time. The field is starting to move in and tighten up. Owen down the back straightaway. Turn number three. Todd Owen has got to shake off Michael Christopher and Keith Rocco. The white flag is out, but there's no surrendering for Todd Owen in the lead. Time running out for Mike Christopher Jr. Goes into turn number two in a hurry. But Todd Owen still on top of his game. Two turns away from a victory. Down into turn number three. Todd Owen has worked so hard. He's done everything. Helped his fellow competitors. Todd Owen has done it. He will win the fall final here at Stafford. Michael Christopher will finish in the runner-up spot. He has a technicality. Put him in the winner's circle. But today, there is no question about it. Todd Owen and the Cooker Construction Gang and the group of competitors that Todd Owen has had through his lifetime of career racing are shining in the spotlight here in Napa Victory Lane here at the Stafford Motor Speedway. And when they compile the highlight film of 2016, it'll be that three-wide move. Rocco on the inside, Mike Christopher on the outside, and taking over the lead with Todd Owen. And this is our last call for banner bids. So Todd Owen is out of his car, and he is standing by with Joe Koss. Todd Owen celebrating a Napa Fall Final victory. Todd, that three-wide move on the front straightaway was remarkable, and then you powered by on those restarts. What was it like inside the wheels you got the victory tonight? Uh, this car was awesome all weekend. I mean, the e-race yesterday, uh, the thing was just on rails. And the three-wide move, I only heard it for a second, and when you're on the outside, you're in the wrong place, so you got to drive it in as hard as you can. But I don't even know what to say. Uh, first off, Mark and Lisa Roofer and the whole Roof family for waiting this thing out. I mean, uh, race fans, they complain a lot about uh, the racetracks, but today there's about seven people in the stands and they still wanted us to race, so people need to think about that sometimes. And I gotta thank Joe Ham, his uh, trainee. Well, I probably broke it last week, but he fixed it for me and uh, they think it was flawless. Ben Dodge from Star Finish Motorsports. Um, Donnie from Rad Auto Machine uh, came on. We teamed up this year and uh, that thing was awesome. Butch Shea for building a, me and him built a pretty good hot rod, so if it wasn't for him, I definitely wouldn't be able to do it. And just all my guys, um, Cooker Construction, they've been to every race for 20 years. They're not here tonight. They were, uh, they had to leave for vacation because of the rain out, so got to thank them. Barnes Pools, um, Tommy's Tattoo, Bob Thiebridge uh, Construction, Austin Auto Body, um, and uh, R&D Construction, they, uh, they fed us all weekend, so we appreciate that. Todd Owen, victorious in the SK Modified. Here tonight, he has won the Napa Fall Final. The man who came home in the third place is uh, Keith Rocco. Keith, uh, that late race restart between you and Todd Owen, what went down on that one? Yeah, you know, just uh, we really didn't need that caution when we were second to him. We had a good car, and he was uh, he was using up some racetrack, but uh, you got to do what you got to do, I guess. But uh, would have liked to battle it out to the end, and I think it would have been pretty good. But once we uh, got shuffled back to third there, I couldn't do nothing. Keith Rocco came home third tonight. The guy who finished in the second spot, Michael Christopher, out in front a moment or two throughout the race. Uh, what would you that you needed to be able to get by Todd Owen there at the finish? Uh, we didn't need that caution at the end. I know uh, I got under Keith, and then uh, the caution came out a lap later. So I, I know we didn't need that. We had a good long run car. Uh, we showed up yesterday because we got wrecked in the legend car at the Nationals, and we decided to come here and do the heat race, and hopefully we start up front, and we did. And 
games, you know, we, uh, that paid off. And I just got to thank everyone, my dad, my uncle, my whole crew, JJ, uh, Tick Mike from Mosquito Free Organic Mosquito Control, Green Construction Management, uh, my mom and dad especially, and Uncle Ted, Mohawk Northeast, Al Hankey, uh you know, it's a great way to end the season under the lights. And it's been a good season for Michael Christopher and this number 82 team. He'll end up 2016 as a runner-up in the final event of the year. So that is our story for the SK Modifieds in 2016. And at the banquet at Manili's Catering on November 18th, it'll be Rowan Panic celebrating for the second year in a row. And now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time to turn your...